This is K.M. Wyland, and you are listening to the 552nd episode of the Helping Writers Become Authors podcast. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode, Archetypal Character Arcs, Part 19, The Flat Archetype of the Ruler. The ruler represents the flat or resting archetype that bridges the queen's rise to power and the king's eventual surrender of that same power. As such, the ruler represents the potential period in a person's life in which he or she is in a position of leadership. This ruler might be a literal head of state, queen, king, president, prime minister, etc. Or the ruler might be a CEO, general, admiral, lead scientist, patriarch or matriarch, captain of a small fishing boat, etc. What is important to this archetype and what distinguishes it from the previous flat archetype of parent is that the ruler is not just in charge, but is the undisputed authority within his or her sphere of influence. The ruler is not merely the loving guide represented by the parent, although in a healthy character, the parent will, of course, have been incorporated into this more advanced archetype but rather the ruler is someone who has learned the hard lessons of the queen's rise to power. Namely, the ruler understands that the primary challenge of true leadership is that of order. A good ruler will understand mercy, but will err toward justice. And as a result, the kingdom runs smoothly and successfully at least until the dawn of the subsequent king arc, signals it is time for the crown to be passed on. From a causal perspective within the real world, the ruler is one of the most powerful of all archetypes, perhaps literally and perhaps symbolically within the sphere of any specific story's smaller kingdom. The ruler's word is law. The decisions made by such a character have vast reach, and will affect the lives of all the characters living within the kingdom, the younger and likely the older archetypes as well. So right away, we can see what a powerful protagonist the ruler makes within a flat arc in which the protagonist will not change, but will instead enact and offer change to the supporting characters. The ruler archetype represents true sovereignty. The previous arc is that of queen, The subsequent positive arc is that of crone, and the subsequent possible negative archetypes are those of the passive hermit and the aggressive wicked witch. The ruler represents the height of a person's power potential. This archetype rests at the very center of the entire life cycle. It is the midpoint between the second act arcs of queen and king. As such, the ruler is a character who has long since overcome the primary challenges of mastering the inner world challenges of the young maiden and hero arcs, but also, thanks to the queen arc, gained a significant amount of control over the outer world. Indeed, it is because of the ruler's inner world control that he or she is able to bring similar order and blessing to the kingdom. The ruler is able to master the kingdom precisely because he or she has first mastered self. We can see this validated if we return to the symbolism of the classical hero's journey, in which the young hero is often called on his quest because the king or ruler is sick, and as a result, the entire kingdom has fallen under a blight. In short, healthy ruler, healthy kingdom. Carol S. Pearson talks about this in Awakening the Heroes Within, when she says, The ruler creates a peaceful and harmonious kingdom by becoming peaceful and harmonious inside. The belief system that inner and outer worlds mirror one another that informs alchemy is encoded in the grail myths, especially with regard to the king's relationship to the kingdom. A ruler who can bless the kingdom with this kind of health is someone who has achieved true sovereignty. We symbolically view this character as the king or the sovereign precisely for this reason, 
A worthy leader is a person who has first mastered or gained sovereignty over themselves. Indeed, the hallmark of the negative ruler, the passive puppet or the aggressive tyrant, is disrespect for either one's own personal sovereignty or that of others. Not surprisingly, the ruler's normal world may be viewed symbolically as a kingdom. It is not necessary for the character to literally rule over a nation. Whatever his or her realm of influence, that is the story's kingdom. As Pearson says, the ruler is the archetype of material prosperity. This does not mean the protagonist needs to be wealthy or even to have a great number of subjects. What it does mean is that the ruler has reached the top of the ladder in whatever his sphere of influence, and he's happy there. If his kingdom is Jeff Bridges' floating school for troubled boys in White Squall, then he is content to rule that kingdom. He is not ambitious. Although he will always be trying to better the lot of his subjects, he is not trying to advance his own position because, archetypally, he is already at the top. And by the way, in case you were wondering, we can know that Jeff Bridges' character is primarily a ruler archetype instead of a parent archetype because his focus is not on loving the boys in his charge, but on helping them become responsible citizens by imposing order upon them. He's not protecting them as children, but demanding they carry their weight as citizens within their little floating kingdom. The kingdom will be a self-contained unit with defined borders. Rulers are not the rulers of everything, unless, of course, they are. Rather, they are finite sovereigns of finite realms with finite borders, and they will recognize and make treaties with other rulers of other realms. Whatever the story's specific kingdom, it will be a space in which the ruler can work to effectively impose order and productivity. To whatever degree possible, the ruler will work to better the lot of the kingdom's subjects and keep the system running smoothly. The ruler is a very advanced archetype, one that only a few people truly embody, even when they have reached the proper chronological age. Although, of course, a ruler can be represented by chronologically younger characters as well. By this point in the life cycle, the ruler has successfully learned and integrated many truths. Most recently, the Queen Arc's only wise leadership and trust in those I love can protect them and allow us all to grow. But the very fact that this character is a ruler, and presumably a pretty good one, means there are many thematic truths available to be handed down to the kingdom. In King, Warrior, Magician, Lover, Robert Moore and Douglas Gillette talk about the ruler's potentially vast range of influence as what they call the central archetype. They say, like the divine child, the good king is at the center of the world. He sits on his throne on the central mountain, or on the primeval hill, as the ancient Egyptians called it. And from this central place, all of creation radiates in geometrical form out to the very frontiers of the realm. World is defined as that part of reality that is organized and ordered by the king. What is outside the boundaries of his influence is non-creation, chaos, the demonic, and non-world. This is a character who is not just brave, smart, and caring, but a character who has integrated all the previous arc's lessons into a profound wisdom. Even when the ruler makes mistakes, this is still a character who has much to offer everyone else, if they are willing to accept. A good ruler is most likely to interact with the younger heroes, initiating them on their quests into adulthood. As with all the older archetypes, the ruler here offers a vital transaction within the life arc cycle. This transaction represents the ability of all the more mature archetypes to help initiate younger archetypes in their own journeys. As Gillette and Moore point out, 
young men today are starving for blessing from older men, starving for blessing from the king energy. This is why they cannot, as we say, get it together. They shouldn't have to. They need to be blessed. They need to be seen by the king because if they are, something inside will come together for them. This is the effect of blessing. It heals and makes whole. That's what happens when we are seen and valued and concretely rewarded with gold, perhaps, dropped from the Pharaoh's hand for our legitimate talents and abilities. A good ruler may also work to transform an upcoming queen. This might seem surprising at first glance, since the queen arc is usually about supplanting a previously unworthy king. But in reality, the queen's transition into leadership need not be so dramatic. If she happens to be fortunate to be successor to a good ruler, that ruler will not stand in the way of her rise. When it is time for him to take his own king arc and step down from the throne, he will pass on the crown to a worthy successor who he has himself blessed and trained up. Certain stories about teachers are often ruler stories. Again, those that focus more on healthy order and maturing their students into adulthood rather than nurturing the students' child capacities. War stories that focus on the burden of command can be seen to feature rulers such as Band of Brothers and the Captain America stories in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And of course, ruler characters are often just that, rulers of countries, kingdoms, villages, galaxies, etc. Flat arc stories about monarchs and presidents are almost always stories about rulers, unless of course they are stories about puppets or tyrants. Usually a ruler story will feature strong subplots about the arcs of the younger characters who are influenced by the ruler protagonist. But if the story is truly a flat arc featuring a ruler archetype as the protagonist versus a change arc in which the protagonist is a younger archetype and the ruler is instead a supporting impact character, the ruler will be presented as the character with the most agency at all of the important structural beats. We have Mr. Knightley in Emma, Leia Organa in Star Wars, Jack Aubrey in the Aubrey Matterin series, Steve Rogers in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Furiosa in Mad Max Fury Road, Skipper Sheldon in White Squall, Dick Winters in Band of Brothers, and Sister Julienne in Call the Midwife. So stay tuned. Next week, we will study the flat archetype of the Elder. And in the meantime, I hope you'll stop by the site and tell me your opinion. Can you think of any further examples of stories that feature the ruler? If you'd like to be part of the word player community over on my site and join in the conversation on this subject, be sure to stop by the website at helpingwritersbecomeauthors.com. You can always find a transcript of the most recent podcast and add your voice to the discussion by visiting the first post on the site's homepage. And don't forget that if you're looking for an older post, you can always find those by putting the podcast title in the search field at the top of the right-hand column. If you enjoyed this podcast, you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Amazon Music, or whatever your favorite podcast platform may be. And if you'd like to do something to support helping writers become authors, it always means a ton if you're able to leave just a quick rating or review on your site of choice. Also, many thanks to those who support my work on Patreon. Your patronage helps make helping writers become authors and it's many resources available to writers everywhere. If you're interested in becoming a patron, you can find out more at patreon.com slash kmwyland. Thank you so much for listening to the Helping Writers Become Authors podcast, and be sure to check back again next week.